Welcome to NTD China News. I'm Tan Chang. Making headlines this Thursday, January 31st. China's Navy set to start training drills. Harsh sentences for two Tibetan men accused of encouraging self immolations. The New York Times says it's being hacked by China. Three Chinese warships are heading to international waters for training drills. State-run Xinhua News Agency reports they left on Tuesday. This morning, the ships passed the Miyako Strait. It runs between Japan's Ryukyu Island but is open to international navigation. The naval exercises will take place in areas including the East and South China Seas, the Miyako Strait and seas to the east of Taiwan. The Chinese regime asserts the drills are part of normal training, but they come amidst China's tense territorial disputes with several Southeast Asian countries. Also, China and Japan's dispute over islands in the East China Sea has raised fears of an outright military conflict. China's military budget has swelled in recent years, but is known for a lack of transparency and rampant corruption. According to a report released by Transparency International this week, the People's Liberation Army, or PLA, which includes China's Air Force and Navy, is at high risk for corruption. The Chinese regime has handed down harsh sentences against two Tibetan men for encouraging self-immolations, but a Tibetan activist says the sentences could further escalate tensions. Two Tibetans were convicted with murder today for inciting self-immolations. A Tibetan monk by the name of Lauren Kangchok was given a delayed death sentence. His nephew Lauren Serving was sentenced to 10 years in prison. A court in Sichuan province said they were guilty of encouraging eight Tibetans to self-immolate, three of whom died. And this is only likely to escalate the situation further and also to intensify the risk of more self-immolations in Tibet. Chinese state media reported that the pair admitted to their crimes, but the information cannot be verified independently. Kate Saunders from the International Campaign for Tibet says she thinks the accusations are unlikely to be true. We have heard separately from some Tibetans connected to the area that uh, Lobsang Kunshok, the uncle, was respected as a good man in his community and it's likely that he would have attempted to show and demonstrate emotional support to families of those who self-immolated. The same with the, the younger nephew, um, he was also highly regarded and uh, respected. The Chinese regime has used the case to stir up resentment against the Dalai Lama. In a press conference today, China's foreign ministry spokesman accused the two Tibetans of following orders from Tibet's exiled spiritual leader. He accused the Dalai Lama of being a separatist and trying to win autonomy for Tibet. The Dalai Lama has repeatedly called for an end to self-immolations, saying they are not effective. Almost 100 Tibetans have set themselves on fire since 2009 in protest of Chinese tyranny. The Chinese regime refuses to admit the immolations are a result of its oppressive policies. A sex extortion scandal in southwestern China continues to develop. Now, a woman involved in the honey trap has been charged for extortion. Her lawyer is applying for bail, saying she was a victim in the whole thing. The woman at the center of a sex tape scandal in Chongqing has been charged with extortion. Guangdong-based Southern Metropolis Daily reported on Thursday that Zhou Hongqia is currently being held in custody. Zhou was allegedly hired by Chongqing construction business owner Chiao Ye in 2007 to seduce local officials. Chiao trained Zhou and other women to secretly record their encounters and use the tapes to extort construction contracts from the officials. One of those tapes surfaced online last November. It led to the removal of Lei Zhengfu, who appeared in the video. Chinese authorities reported last week that another 10 officials have since been sacked. According to the southern metropolis, Zhou Hongjia was arrested on December 31st. Two other women linked to the honey trap were also arrested. Zhou, now married with one child, said she was tricked by Chiao. Her lawyer says she was a victim herself and is applying for bail on her behalf. The case has exposed corruption within both the Chongqing government and its police force. The southwestern metropolis had once been hailed as China's crime-fighting center. But its former police chief, Wang Lijun, is now jailed for his role in a murder case. The city's former party chief, Bo Xilai, is facing a trial of his own. 
The smog in China just won't go away, and it's causing a big headache not just for people walking around, but other commuters as well. Next, we go to Tianjin, where the poor visibility has caused a major traffic incident. A 40-car pileup in Tianjin, China. It's just one of many incidents caused by thick smog that's wreaking havoc across northern China as pollution reaches alarming levels. The pileup injured six people and caused a severe traffic disruption for morning commuters. Adding to the mess, nearly 50 flights were delayed at Tianjin Airport. Tianjin's air quality monitoring stations reported that air pollution had reached hazardous levels through the early afternoon. Meanwhile, light sleet eased Beijing's notorious pollution on Thursday, but levels still remained in the unhealthy range. Air quality in the Chinese capital has mostly stayed between very unhealthy and hazardous for about two weeks on an index that measures particulate matter in the air. To help combat the smog, Beijing has temporarily shut down about 100 heavily polluting factories and took 30 percent of government vehicles off the roads. The New York Times is reporting has been the victim of persistent, repeated cyber attacks from China for the past four months. The Chinese hackers attempted to gain access to the Times computer systems and obtain passwords of its reporters and employees. The hackers have been expelled from their systems, the Times reports, after the security experts tracked the hackers' movement. The paper says it has implemented stronger security defenses. The attacks coincided with an investigative report by the New York Times published on October 25th last year. It alleged that the family of Chinese Premier Wen Jiabao had amassed a multi-billion dollar fortune. The hackers managed to break into the email account of the Times Shanghai bureau chief David Barbosa. He was the author of the report in question. They also gained access to Jim Yardley's account. He was a Times bureau chief in Beijing and he now works as the bureau chief in India. And coming up after the break, Pakistan gives China management of a key port. Why smog could smother Chinese New Year fireworks and Shen Yun Performing Arts opens in Washington, D.C. And welcome back. The Pakistani government approved a change in management for one of its strategic ports on Wednesday. Once in effect, the port will be managed by China Overseas Holding Limited. The Gwadar port is still in its development stages, but could be a major asset when it's finished. The Port of Singapore Authority had been managing it during construction, but has withdrawn from its contract. The Pakistani Information Minister has said the PSA was unable to develop and operate the port as desired. China financed three quarters of the port's construction and is expected to develop it further. The port sits just around 40 miles from the border with Iran. The port gives access to two-thirds of the world's oil reserves. It's also a key military outpost. The acquisition of the Guada port follows a trend of Chinese companies buying up ports around the world. Since new Communist Party leader Xi Jinping came to power, he has declared his intent to crack down on corrupt officials. After a few months of high-profile cases, apparently more and more Chinese officials are getting nervous. That, some say, is driving the current trend of selling off luxury real estate. Chinese media have been reporting about a spike in real estate sales since November's 18th Party Congress. The sell-off has been linked to Chinese officials. It follows calls by senior leaders to crack down on corruption. After Xi Jinping took office, he's been making a lot of noise about anti-corruption, so officials who have ill-gotten properties are getting rid of them. But it appears news of the property sell-off isn't sitting well with some. An article by Beijing Evening News on January 25th titled, Why Civil Servants Are Selling Their Properties, disappeared. It was replaced with the title, Beijing Civil Servants Property Selling Report is a Rumor. Reporter was demoted. The Communist Party's own internal disciplinary body also appeared to have had a change of heart on the issue. State-run media reported earlier this month that the Central Commission for Discipline Inspection told Central Party authorities there has been an increase in the sale of luxury apartments in 45 Chinese cities since November. Some of the owners were reportedly government officials or those with high-ranking positions in state-owned companies. The commission later denied it made such a report. 
There have been too many negative reports about corruption, and they hurt the Communist Party's hold on power because the public can clearly see the current level of corruption. So that's why the Central Commission for Discipline Inspection is changing its stance. According to the Commission's initial report, 60 percent of property owners had sold their properties anonymously under pseudonym or title of a business. They also remained behind the scenes during the transaction, all indicating anxieties over the current corruption crackdown. Earlier in the broadcast, we heard how China's smog led to a massive traffic pileup. It's having other effects too, like a possible cutback to one traditional celebration during the Chinese New Year. Chinese authorities are encouraging people to limit the burning of firecrackers during upcoming Chinese New Year celebrations. Smoke from the fireworks could worsen the existing air pollution. Toxic fumes from coal burning and emissions from millions of vehicles have led to thick smog blanketing several cities across China. Although authorities have scrambled to put in place temporary measures to improve the condition, in Beijing, the air quality index hit levels high above hazardous four times already. And now, in an apparent move to shift the attention away from state industry emissions, authorities are targeting a long-standing tradition. Chinese people have lit firecrackers as part of Lunar New Year celebrations for 2,000 years. But following a news commentary on Beijing News to cut back on the tradition, regulators are echoing the call. They say it could not only save money and reduce pollution, but also prevent fire-related accidents. According to Beijing's Environmental Monitoring Center, the air quality index rose to nearly 1,600 on the eve of Chinese New Year in 2012, two hours after setting off firecrackers. A level of 300 is considered dangerous, while the World Health Organization recommends a daily level of no more than 20. Shen Yun Performing Arts arrived in Washington, D.C. this week. Its opening show on Tuesday evening displayed China's 5,000 years of culture to audience members who say they're eager to share it with others. On January 29th, Shen Yun Performing Arts wrapped up its first show of 2013 in the U.S. Capitol. It was great and congratulations. I think this one was one of the best that I have seen. It was outstanding. Every act was just so perfect. Amongst the audience members at the prestigious Kennedy Center was Annette Tillman. She's the wife of the late U.S. Congressman Tom Lantos. The beauty and the... the meaning that every one of these acts have, I think, really communicates itself to the audience. Miss Tillman is here with her daughter. She wants her to appreciate more than just Shen Yun's music and dance, but also its deeper messages. It's so wonderful to be able to bring her to something that is so purely uplifting. Where do you see so many beautiful young people, so disciplined and yet so joyful, and, and, and telling a story that, that needs to be reiterated, that, you know, we, that all that is beautiful comes from our Creator and that we will return there and we will be reunited with one another. It's, a, it's an absolutely wonderful message, timeless and of eternal significance. Shen Yun Performing Arts aims to revive China's 5,000 years of culture. Ms. Tillman says the principles distilled from this culture should be understood by everyone. When we bring our children and our grandchildren to see the Shen Yun dancers, it's because we want them to somehow internalize these timeless principles that have been so beautifully developed over 5,000 years of practice and virtue and discipline. And, and it is truly manifest magnificently in this astonishing performance. Shen Yun Performing Arts New York Company will be performing seven shows at the Kennedy Center until February 3rd. And I hope you do it every year and we'll be here every year to enjoy it. NTD News, Washington, D.C. And that's all for this broadcast of NTD China News. For more on China-related topics, visit our website at ntd.tv or subscribe to our YouTube channel, NTD on China. Coming up next is China Focus with Shelley Zhang. Stay tuned.